And good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is Mr. Kasari, and welcome to episode two of World of Warships Beta. Okay, guys. So today we're going to be taking out the St. Louis. The St. Louis was a World War I uh, light cruiser. All right. So she had a little bit of an armor belt, but not much. And you can tell she's World War I. She has these barbette mounted side turrets. Uh, these are basically, sorry, casemate mounted. She has these casemate mounted turrets, all right, and casemate mounted secondary armament, and uh, the upgraded version. So I think she has a single anti aircraft gun somewhere. Yep, so she has these six, these small, light uh, Hotchkiss Mark 1s. Anyways, this is a World War I design. Uh, basically, she was. <clears throat> really designed to be a scout cruiser for the U.S. Navy, all right? So not designed to really hold up to the line of battle, but designed to hunt down the enemy and find her. Unfortunately for the St. Louis class, she was far too slow for that role, and she was the only modern cruiser to serve in the U.S. Navy in World War I. However, she's slow compared to other light cruisers, and uh, not really the best design in the world. However, she gets the job done, and in World of Warships, at her tier, she's actually pretty dangerous, and I'll show you why. Um, overall, this is a ship where you don't want to be necessarily engaging the enemy head-on. Most cruisers are like that. Um, I have won a couple duels against battleships in her. Uh, however, you basically want to expect that to be the exception to the rule. Okay. You don't want to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with a battleship. Um, she could be pretty dangerous if she's top tier. I don't think she will be. Nope, she's not. All right, so I wholly... Crap. Oh, she's a premium, premium war spike class. Ha, huh, fun. Okay, basically, um, they're just adding more premiums to the game right now, so, yeah. Uh, we're going to not want to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with any of the battleships. We really don't want to. So what I'm probably going to do is see where I start, form up with one of our battleships, and I'm probably going to head up towards Alpha and hope that one of these two battleships, either war spike or Wyoming, General follows me up. So I'm going to bring her around. If you notice, she has a lot of guns, all right? We have an, in this, war, in this warship, we have an eight-gun broadside, all right? Let me demonstrate that to you right now, what that actually means. That's what that actually means. Double-click, by the way, to fire full salvo. Um, she also has the advantage of pretty quick-turning guns, which is an advantage, definitely. And uh, yeah, she's she's faster than the Y than the the whatever ship we were flying, the Dakota uh, South Carolina. She's much faster than South Carolina, which is also World War One design. Generally, you can tell the World War One designs. Let's see, screening to Alpha. Generally, the World War One designs have these casemate mounted guns. Um, they fell out of favor pretty quick. They actually were pretty terrible for warships, mostly because they tended to get a wash in anything beyond mild sea conditions. Uh, a wash, by the way, means that they're uh, getting flooded by the waves as they come up. You can actually kind of see why. I mean, you can see why. I mean, they're pretty low to the deck, uh, pretty low to the waterline. There's not a lot of freeboard between those guns and the waterline. Uh, if you can tell, by the way, I'm a boat guy. I like boats. I like ships. I like sea. I like things with big guns on them. It's one of the things that drew me to World of Warships. Uh, because you really, you know, it's it's a fun game. It's it's fun, and I like battleships. And uh, carriers are cool, but there's something about the, I don't know, the majesty of these big of the big gun battleships dueling each other. So as a cruiser, your job is to scout and to kill enemy destroyers and cruisers. Your job is not to engage battleships. You leave that to the battleships. So when I said I'm screening, what I mean is that I'm moving up ahead of these battleships to battle the Wyoming and the War Spike. Uh, with the intention of taking out any destroyers, there is a destroyer, that I encounter. Destroyers are very dangerous for battleships for a couple of reasons. You saw in the last video I actually managed to kill one. However, that was more because the AI was being an idiot. Absolute idiot. And uh, kind of came on straight at me at close range, didn't take evasive action, and got himself pounded. Normally what a destroyer should do is try and get into close range of me in a battleship and then fire a spread of torpedoes at close enough range that I can't dodge them because I'm slow and lumbering and, you know, I'm a battleship. I'm slow and lumbering. 
So what they're going to try and supposed to do is run in, pop torpedoes at me, hopefully sink me or severely damage me, and then run away. As a cruiser, my job is to keep that from happening. Taking the lead. Which uh, may or may not be doable. That's a Mayogi over there. I think he's sent here as me. Oh, yes. Okay. So he's in the cruiser. No, he's a battleship. Okay. Yep, you can see my Yogi battleship. All right. So I might end up switching over to armor piercing rounds. Um, we'll see. His belt may be thick enough to keep me from doing much with armor piercing rounds. So armor piercing rounds are a bit tough because you kind of have two options with them. Um, armor piercing rounds, if you're firing from a big gun, are ineffective against small ships because the small ships won't trigger their their uh, charges. All right. So this happened to the Japanese, actually, the Battle of Leyte Gulf, where a lot of their armor-piercing rounds were actually going through American sh the American destroyers that they were engaging at the time. Um, conversely, on a small ship, they're not going to really have enough mass to actually penetrate their armor. Now, oh, okay, someone's firing on them. Good. <laughs> that almost looks like that's another St. Louis that just engaged. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to spin around, and I'm going to engage this St. Louis off here. refire rate on this than I did in my battleship. Of course, that kind of necessitates me actually being able to hit this turret. If you notice, I have that battleship coming in off my bow somewhere, so I have to be careful about that. That's better. Yep, there he goes. Alright, that was the Mayogi. Alright, so let's start evasive action here. Good, I lit him on fire. I'm not doing a lot of damage, but I did do some damage. So he's actually zipping behind. The ocean over there. And I'm getting shots in on this guy. So if you notice, I'm a bit restricted because I need to get my broadside guns to bear. I am doing good damage to him. Now, as a smaller vessel, I'm going to have some issues, though, because I can't really engage him. With armor-piercing rounds, or at least I can't engage that Mayoki with armor-piercing rounds, which is... Our team is taking the lead. Um, simply put, my shells don't have enough mass to actually engage him. So, yep, that's a secondary gun's firing him now. He is also an injured war design, so I'm actually going to try switching to my armor-piercing rounds and see if that helps me at all. So I fired a little bit low. The enemy team has taken the lead. Okay, so he's getting pounded. Oh, that's why he's being engaged by multiple battleships at the same time. Yeah, that generally happens. Alright, so even for a battleship, you don't want to be engaged by multiple of your buddies. Alright? Because by multiple other battleships, because they're gonna hurt. They're big. They're big like you are. And, you know, getting engaged by a Wyoming in a war fight is not exactly a good way to start the day for you. So we're actually gonna pivot a little bit. We'll see. Well, I did some decent damage, actually. Engaging each other with our secondary arms. And he's out. Okay. <laughs> and now I'm getting engaged by that St. Louis over there. So honestly, your HE is probably your best bet in this sort of situation. So now I'm doing myself basically. We're both big, we both carry a lot of firepower. Both now engage each other. 
but I'm engaging with some more if you can see. So I have the advantage here. Yep, I got the same one too. Enemy cruiser destroyed! So I took out an enemy cruiser. Good. So you can see we have that Chester class, who's now toast as well. Uh, so I'm going to start plowing my way towards Bravo. You can see there's a destroyer down there who's engaging our Myopi. He's out of my range, though. But he's in a bad situation now, because he's even though he has he's faster and maneuverable, <clears throat> he's being engaged by a St. Louis class, a war, the War Spite, and a Myopi. So he's screwed. He's just straight up screwed. There is no way he can hold up to that firepower for very long. You can see we have another Wyoming here who's just entering my gunnery range. So I'm going to start engaging him at maximum range, and I'm also going to start trying to get the heck and start a phase of blue maneuvers against his fire. Hopefully I have enough time to actually watch the shells as they're inbound. Um, I shouldn't be firing full broadsides against the target from the monster. Oh, good. I actually got some good time. So another trick with this game is that deck armor on warships tends to be a little bit less than... Stop moving. Deck armor on warships tends to not be uh, especially early in the war, before really aircraft become a threat. So what you really want to do is get in the sort of plunging fire that I'm getting right now, where my shots are actually diving on him, because so they're coming down out of the sky as they're running. Is actually really important because his deck armor is going to be a lot lower. You can see that those shots from someone another battleship had plunging fire down and took him out. <clears throat> so there are advantages to engaging at sort of long range, high angles of trajectory, which is that it bypasses a significant amount of your opponent's armor. All right. So even in a cruiser, you can see I'm doing some damage. Uh, Our victory is in sight. <clears throat> I'm doing some damage. I got a sink ship with some assistance from my buddies. Uh, so it's not impossible to get some good shots in as a cruiser. You just don't want to be primary by a battleship, all right? For more than a couple seconds. Because they will take you out eventually. Um, unless they're heavily damaged or there's something else going on, you're going to die if you try and engage a cruiser directly. Now, another trick with a ship like this is you can see it kind of taking these tacking turns. Um, a sailing ship would call this tacking. And that's a sailing ship usually done to turn your ship so that it's in or coming in or out of the water. Yeah, okay. What I was doing there was trying to clear my broadside for action. So most of my guns are on my broadside. Let's go back to the uh, What do I have for modules? How much XP do I need? I need 7,000 XP for that Phoenix class. Okay. So that's the next tier of American cruiser. All right, the Phoenix. <clears throat> so let's do another battle on this thing. So what I'm basically doing is I'm, I'm jinking back and forth to clear my broadside for action, all right? And that's because almost all... Okay, so I'm pretty much top tier here except for this Kawachi, which I think is a battleship. Yes, she is. Interesting. Okay. So this should be a pretty good fight for me because I'm almost top, top tier. Almost. If that battleship wasn't to the tier I, in the match, I wouldn't be. So I'm going to head south still. Um, as long as I don't run into the enemy battleship, I should be okay. And if I do, I should be able to get out of there pretty quickly. There are enough islands down here that I should be able to negotiate that much at least. Action so stations. Rolling. All right, so let's see. Yeah, I'm gonna head south along India, roughly. So in between the island at India six and India five. Um, other cool thing you can do is I can set. Autopilot mode enabled. Waypoints. There we go. So the ship's going to basically steer itself, um, which kind of frees me up a little bit. Uh, you can use this especially for carriers where you may not may want to be moving but paying attention to what you're doing with your aircraft at the same time. Um, and also for this sort of a match where I can take my hand off the mouse and just kind of observe the battle map and keep an eye on everything. <clears throat> so what I was doing there was I was tapping. So I wanted to move in one direction, all right? I wanted to move, let's say, north. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move, turn my ship northwest, northeast, northwest, northeast. That keeps me going in the direction I want to be going in, but it also keeps my, my broadside roughly pointed at the target. Okay, we got contact already. Look at that. Right, we got a eerie... 
All right, so we're going to start losing it. Ships of people get a damn one. You can see the sparks are pretty much heading straight up at these two. So it's hard to get my... my oh, fire, 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 fire. Hit hard. Here now, right? So eventually I'll be able to clear my guns. Oh, oh, sir. Good. That did some good damage. Huh? So as you can see, these guys are actually a lot smaller than I am. Uh, I fired a bit forward that time. Oh! Yeah, it's always a bit disturbing when shots actually go over you. Now, what I don't want to do is I want to draw the fire of their entire fleet. That Eerie's turning it on. That's what I want. I have to remember that I can't repair my ship. Up. That took it out. You destroyed an enemy cruiser. And I'm on fire. And I have 20 seconds until I can actually use my. Uh... Oh gosh, it's another one. So basically, that still does some pretty good damage. So now he's realizing, the AI is realizing, that he's a bit out. And I think that was his steering gear that just went out. Sort of. Enemy cruiser destroyed. <clears throat> so that's good. That's good. Uh, also check your mini map because it'll tell you when you're closing in on something like you know a uh, a rock. Rocks are bad. Don't want to hit those rocks. All right, so we're gonna slip over here, and I'm probably gonna engage that other St. Louis while he's distracted. I don't want to engage that Kawachi, however, because that would be bad for me. So you can see, oh, he's bow on to me. This guessed which way it was pointing. As you can see, your firing control kind of automatically keeps track of where you're supposed to be pointing. Uh, but these guys are now just taking fire from everywhere. All right, and they've just crossed out of my real visual range there. So I'm going to come back up to full speed. They're going to toast even before I cap the space. And even before I get in range of the two of them. But you can see as a cruiser, I'm not supposed to engage that battleship. That was specifically not my job. Other cruisers are my prey. Other cruisers and destroyers are what I want to aim at and engage. I don't want to deal with engaging anything, you know. Why is he bowing on to me? <laughs> and 
and there he goes, he's dead. But, as you can see, my job isn't necessarily to engage enemy battleships, my job is to engage enemy ships. So if we look at our team score here, you can see... Oh, look at that. I actually did the most, got the most score out of any ship, the most XP on any ship. Equaled the number of sinkage with our battleship, and got 284 experience. Now, of course, that's increased a lot because if you look at my detailed report, credits and XP, you can see I got 284, but that becomes 426 once my premium account is taken into a consideration. Okay, as you can see, auto repair, ammunition, auto resupply, and I still end up with 36,000 credits. Back to port, please. And I got a promotion. Now, because my guns are small enough, that's when shells are switched. But plus minus 10 to reload time with guns. Okay, so if I look at, let's see, port. Artillery. 7.5 rounds per minute. Okay. So now if I go back to him, let's see if it actually shows a change here. No, it still shows it's 7.5 rounds per minute. Okay. But I think it's going to be a little faster with that skill because it says... Minus 10 reload time of guns with caliber up to 155. So I think that should be good. Um, and then at level, when I get two more levels, I can actually get myself aiming expert. Okay. <clears throat> now, 155. Let me look at the temperature for cruisers. Yep. Those are all 152s. Oh, look. It's another cruiser that doesn't actually have turrets. Huh. Let me get the turrets back. Okay, so up here I get them. All right, so those are, an, an again, 152s. Let's get the Cleveland 152s. Pensacola, 203s. So the Pensacola, I'll lose that bonus on the 150s because they'll be larger guns. And then the newer ones, I think, are smaller. So 203s, 203s, and 203s. But that'll actually be wicked helpful for me um, later on because a lot of these secondary guns on these ships are actually pretty tough. Now, you haven't seen me use torpedoes yet, and the reason for that is the U.S. ships don't really use torpedoes. Um, the Phoenix has some, and the Omaha has some. But I think you, yeah, and then you lose them with the Cleveland. On the other hand, the American destroyers, after the Cleveland class, tier 6 and higher, you can see AA guns 36 and 49 artillery compared to the Japanese classes. Yeah. So they have a lot more AA guns and a lot, a lot more uh, gunnery on them as well. So that's kind of the, the track that U.S. destroyers follow. They go up and they lose a lot of their guns. They lose their torpedo armaments after you get them. <clears throat> but in addition to that, they also gain a significant amount of anti-air coverage and a gunnery. So pick it as you will. All right, guys, this has been Mr. Casario. I thank you all for watching. It has been fun as always. Hope to see you again in the future. If you enjoyed this episode, give me a like, comment, subscription. Um, generally, general plan for the series, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be doing kind of a video per ship as I go through. And uh, so this won't be every week or every, you know, couple days a week. So this will be kind of as soon as whenever I get a new ship that I want to show off to you guys. Um, you can see here, i working on the Sam. Actually, the Chester is 630. What do I need for the Samson? 720. Okay, so maybe next video I'll start in on those destroyers and I'll show you guys the Samson class, which is a bit better in terms of torpedoes. Yeah, I like that. All right, so uh, we'll we'll play with torpedoes a little bit, I guess, next time. And try not to get popped as we do it. Anyways, guys, this has been Mr. Casarian. Hope you enjoyed the videos. I'll see you next time. Happy hunting. <laughs>